Hi, Professor Baldwin here, and today we're going to talk about increasing, decreasing, and piecewise functions. Remember that we're going to read our graphs from left to right. So, looking at this first example, we need to determine the intervals on which the function is increasing, decreasing, and constant. This graph is a piecewise function because it's a bunch of different functions pieced together. Now, when we read from left to right, we're going to determine which sections or intervals are increasing, which are decreasing, and which are constant. I like to start at the far left and read the whole graph from left to right. So this first chunk, we go from negative 5 to negative 3 and it's flat or constant from that negative 5 to negative 3. So that interval, negative 5 to negative 3, goes here in constant. Then the next chunk of the graph goes here from negative 3, and notice that we're increasing as we follow it, and it goes from negative 3 to negative 1. That interval is increasing, so we put that interval, negative 3 through negative 1, and the increasing. Now the next chunk of graph we have is this section. And notice when we draw it, we're decreasing. And we're decreasing on the interval 1 to 3. And then our very last section, we go from 3 to 5. And notice that part of the graph is increasing. It's rising as we go from left to right. So the interval 3 through 5 goes with the increasing. These intervals are always in open notation because, for instance, the point 3 right here, this minimum, we can't declare that this is decreasing or increasing since it's a transition point. So we leave them as open. Now we want to determine the domain and the range of this function above. Remember that domain are your possible x values, and your range are the possible y values. Well, our domain, as we saw when we drew the graph, the smallest was negative 5, and it includes the point negative 5, and the largest value of x we see is positive 5. Then our range, those are our y values. The lowest y value we ever see on our graph is negative 4, and it's included in this graph. And the largest y value we see is up here at positive 6. Now some graphs we're going to see these relative maximum or minimums. These are the peaks or the valleys of the graph. So above, we saw that we had this relative minimum at 3. So when x is 3, we have a minimum. Let's look at this example where we have to graph the function, and then we have to estimate the intervals in which the function is increasing or decreasing, and then identify any relative maxima or minima. Now, to graph, we can pick any values for x, and then substitute those into our function to find the corresponding values for y, or the f of x. Let's pick negative 5, 0, and 5. When we plug negative 5 in, we get 5 minus the absolute of negative 5, or 5 minus 5, which is 0. This is the point negative 5, 0, or right here. And when we substitute 0 in, we have 5 minus the absolute value of 0, which is just 5. So that's the point 0, 5. And lastly, 5 minus the absolute value of 5 is 5 minus 5, which again is 0. So this is the point positive 5, 0. Now if we connect these three dots, we can see what this function looks like. 
And I'm going to put arrows at the ends because we know that the function continues on in both directions. So where is our function increasing? Well, this first chunk is increasing. And it's increasing from negative infinity, since the graph continues on in this direction, and it increases until we get to an x value of 0. And then the right side of the graph is decreasing, and it's decreasing from 0 through positive infinity because this end of the graph is continuing on. And then we can identify that we have this relative maxima, right? It's a maximum point or a peak. So we have a relative maxima of 5 at x equals 0. How about an application problem? We're told that a rhombus is inscribed in a rectangle that is w meters wide with a perimeter of 40 meters. Each vertex of the rhombus is a midpoint of a side of the rectangle. Express the area of the rhombus as a function of the width of the rectangle. Okay, start with what we know. We know that the perimeter of our rectangle is 40 meters. And we know that perimeter is equal to 2w plus 2l. Well, do we know how big this side L is? No, but we can find it since we know the perimeter. So we know 40 equals 2w plus 2l. We can divide everything by 2 to get 20 equals w plus l. And solving that for l, we get l equals 20 minus w. So the sides of this rectangle are 20 minus w. Now recall that the area of a rhombus is equal to 1 half times each of the diagonals. And the diagonals are these measurements. D1 would be straight across and D2 would be vertical. So it's kind of making this rhombus look like a kite. And we know how big D1 and D2 are. D1 is exactly equal to our W. So we have 1 half times W. And D2 is exactly equal to our length, which is 20 minus W. Now we can distribute the 1 half w through the parentheses, so we get 20 w over 2 minus w squared over 2. And we can simplify this to get 10 w minus w squared over 2. So the area of the rhombus as a function of the width of the rectangle is this equation of 10w minus w squared over 2. Okay, now for some piecewise functions. Remember that piecewise functions are composed of different formulas for different parts of a domain. So it's piecing together a bunch of functions to make one picture. For the first example, we're given a piecewise function g of x, and we're asked to evaluate it for three different values. The first one, g of negative 4. We're looking for an x value of negative 4. So you need to look at the domain and figure out where negative 4 falls, which piece. And negative 4 falls into this first piece. So we can calculate g of negative 4 with negative 4 plus 4, or that equals to 0. How about g of 1? Well, 1 falls in the first interval again. So g of 1 
is equal to 1 plus 4, or it's equal to 5. And then our last, g of 3. Well, 3 is greater than 1, so it falls into the second piece. So it's 8 minus 3, or g of 3 equals 5. Now, what if you are given a piecewise function and you're asked to draw the graph of it? Well, just take it piece by piece. The first piece here, we have 1 half x minus 1. That's a line. And that's a line with a y-intercept of negative 1. And notice that we're graphing when x is less than 0. So it's less than the y-axis. So we can start at the intercept of negative 1. And we're going to put an open circle because our domain is that x is less than, strictly less than 0. So it doesn't include this value. Now we're going to use the slope of 1 half, which tells us if we go down 1, we'll go left 2 units. And we can do this a couple of times so that it's easy for me to draw that straight line. And since it's a line going to the left, we can put an arrow on it that it continues on leftward. Now look at the second piece. The function equals 3, so that's a constant function. And it's at the, the y value of 3. And that happens when x is between 0 and 1. So 1, 2, 3, so starting here and until we get to 1. And both of these are closed circles because the domain is the equals. And then lastly, the negative 2x. So y equals negative 2x when x is greater than 1. Well, this is a y-intercept of 0, right? This is the same as y equals negative 2x plus 0. But we can't draw anything to the left of x equals 1 because this piecewise is only when x is greater than 1. So we need to pretend that we have the starting point of the origin, and then we would use our slope, which is down to right 1, and that actually shows us where we start, which is right here. Or you can evaluate g at 1, and you get negative 2 times 1 equals negative 2. So you know when x is 1, your starting point is here at negative 2. Then you can use your slope of negative 2, count down 2, and write 1. Connect those dots, and you have the last piece of this piecewise function. Lastly, we're asked to find the domain, remember those are the x values, and the range, the y values, for the function above. Start from left to right when you're looking for the domain. Well, the red line is going to the left forever and ever. So our domain is going to start at negative infinity. And if we keep on going to the right, we go from the red graph, we switch to the green, and then we jump to the blue. And notice that the blue graph is going to continue on, and it's going to head towards positive infinity. Now for the range, you want to start at the lowest y value. Well, notice that the red graph and the blue graph are both pointing downwards for infinity. So the range is going to go from negative infinity, and then we're going to follow our y-axis up to the highest point of our graph, which is where this green line is. And that is at the value of 3. So the largest value of y we ever see is 3, and because our graph is at the value of 3, we'll use a closed bracket. I know that was a lot, so if you have any questions or there's a problem that you want help with, leave it in the comments and I'll include it in one of my videos.